Well, I mean, I, I don't know how other people felt. I kind of felt the, uh, the day after. It's, it's like, the, you know, the ant's nest is kind of broken op open and all the ants kind of rush around trying to re restore order. And I think we're still kind of trying to do that. But the reality is that, the, you know, the ant's nest isn't going to be put together again uh, in the way that it was uh, before. And uh, we are, I think, gradually seeing played out uh, most of the impacts that were forecast. And the point about those forecasts is, of course, that they are for the longer term, uh, not just the short term. The most interesting thing that came out of the, what Donald Tusk, the president of the European Council, said yesterday uh, was, we also considered the post-Brexit economic situation in the presence of the European Central Bank president, who reassured us about the good and constant cooperation of central banks. However, it was also made clear that Brexit means substantially lower growth in the UK with a positive neg possible, possible negative spillover all over the world. That's a pretty stark uh, uh, warning and nothing uh, that's, that's uh, surprising. I mean, it seems to me you've got our own uh, uncertainties, which Alistair uh, will, will, will talk about, which are clearly uh, massive. You've also got a lot of uncertainties, both p political uncertainties um, and economic uncertainties in the remaining member states of the European Union. If you look at the statements that have been made so far, look at the statement that Merkel and Hollande uh, issued. There was a very good analysis in Le Monde yesterday, uh, which showed kind of the bits that were Hollande and the bits that were Merkel. It's sort of patched, it's patched together, and it doesn't say anything really uh, of any substance about how they are going to address uh, the future of the European Union. The, the, the certainty uh, in all of this uh, is that there won't be a negotiation uh, unless and until we trigger, trigger Article uh, 50, which I assume we will do after a vote in the House of Commons sometime uh, in September or uh, a bit uh, beyond. If it's delayed, then our partners, I think, won't simply hang around. They will start to say, this is the kind of deal we're prepared to uh, talk to you uh, uh, about. So they could present us not with a fait accompli, but they could narrow uh, the terms on which we are uh, negotiating. And the basis of all of this is reciprocity. You don't, you don't get what you don't give. So all this talk about uh, access to the single market without um, freedom of movement uh, is for the birds. The only circumstances in which that might change is if our partners, for reasons of their own in terms of domestic pressures, began to think that uh, they might want some kind of limitation of freedom of movement. But you've got a European Union of 27 uh, other countries, and of course you've got a large number of those countries, Central and Eastern Europeans, for whom any change in freedom of movement is an anathema. So I think it's going to be uh, long and messy.